do a pipeline here, right? So let's just string a bunch of commands together using our little pipe character. So if we do pwsh PowerShell, right? Now we're in PowerShell. So we're pretty much good to go. It's checking out, making sure we've got installed, loading personnel profiles, everything is good. So we're good to go. Now what happens if we go get process and we're pipe, so we want to put in a condition here, right? Where object CPU minus GT2, and then we want to go pipe, and we want to sort our object so it comes in and sorted under CPU. What do you think is going to happen? Maybe I typoed it. I didn't. So we have CPUs, and we have how they're sorted out by process for our CPU for minus GT2 for that object CPU. So we can get an object and we can sort on that object. And this is basically what a pipeline is. We're going to go get something. We're going to maybe look for something where it's a specific thing. So I can now start checking my CPU loads as code. This is great because now if my CPU hits 80%, I can probably track it. Right? I can go take a look at where this is going and see where that whole process is and which one of these is the real element that I need to be paying attention to. So CPU seconds, that 45.99 is where I probably want to start looking. And this is just a wild guess. So I would actually start digging into this and start seeing what we've actually got, right? Because we're now sorting all this stuff together and you can get that whole process together. Now that you've got this little tiny pipeline, get process where object sort object now you can actually start taking a look at in your shell scripting how i can start doing metering and monitoring and alerting just by doing a shell script and then uh, this is where automation comes in and this is where devops comes in so this is really kind of a neat way of taking a look at it there's so many neat things that you can do when you get into powershell on this that you really do get a chance of actually going ahead and formatting and filtering and pulling all the processes out and then sorting those processes on how heavy or how hard they're running. And you can actually do really neat stuff with this and really just kind of pull it apart and take a look at how you want to go about formatting your commands. And then you can actually then go ahead and just format your output so that you've got a thing. So if we go ahead and we take a look at what that process looks like, you can actually just go ahead and format that list. You can format it in some other way, depending on how you want to do it. Right now we've got it formatted as a table. So if we want to go and just do this, let's try formatting this in a different way. So we put another command in here and we'll go format list. What do you think happens? I get a different format. So instead of a table, I can get a list. And again, this is great depending on how if you wanted to shove this into a database. So if you wanted to shove this into a database, you could actually start parsing this stuff out. The second format as a list is actually probably better for your database because now you've got a header, column, header, and data. So it's really just kind of nice. And you can see that some of that data is empty, so you'll have to allow for nulls in that data set. But if you wanted to start data warehousing this stuff and check in to see how many times handles are or something else going on inside that CPU, You've now got the commands for it. So again, just the neat part of all this when you're digging into it is how does all this stuff work together? So if you've done this and you did this exercise, you've now done your first Azure DevOps Windows pipeline. Congratulations. Well done. All right, folks, I will see you in the next one. But this is how you do shell scripting, and it's a lot of fun, and you do it in Windows.